Good evening, members of Redeemer, friends. Uh, once again, we take God's word and we turn to Psalm 90, and I'm going to read, uh, 95, I should say, and I'm going to read it for us again. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The height of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. As at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, There are a people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Therefore, I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Now we began yesterday to look at this psalm and we uh, looked at these two different notes. The one jubilant and enthusiastic praise and the other a somber reflection that receives God's instruction with a believing heart. Now, we got to the end of verse 5 yesterday, and so I want us to continue. Now this is still part five, uh, 6 and 7, uh, our uh, 7a is still part of the, the joyful expression. But here, uh, it uh, verses 1 through 5 talks about singing the, the praises of the Lord, and here we're introduced to a more reverential uh, aspect of our worship. Not only exuberant joy, but we need to bow. We need to go on our knees in the presence of the Lord. We need to enter the presence of our King humbly. That's very important here. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. The, the call here is not for a literal kneeling, although that's not to be excluded, of course, but it is really the kneeling and the, the, the attitude in worship should be one that is worshipful. It's reverence and humility, acknowledging God for who he is and accepting our place. God's not serving us, we're serving him. God's not the one who caters to our needs and our desires. He is not the one who serves us, but we serve him. And in worship, we acknowledge that relationship. We acknowledge that the relationship we have with God is not our doing. He is the one who makes us who we are as the people of God. We are totally, totally dependent upon him. Uh, we looked at these words, similar words in Psalm 100 in terms of Exodus 19 where God tells us how we bind uh, bound Israel to himself 
and how we made them into a nation. And in uh, our Christian lives, it's the same thing. The church exists because Christ paid the price for his people. And here we acknowledge for he is our God. The reason we worship, the reason we bow down before him is because he is our God. Just for a moment, remind yourself what our God did. Our God, in Jesus Christ, humbled himself and did not consider equality with his Father something to be grasped be held on to, to be used for his own advantage. No, he emptied himself of all the divine glory that belongs to him and he took on our nature and became like us in every way so that you and I may be saved, that our sins may be forgiven, that we may be restored to fellowship with God. Do you see what it is to acknowledge this, that he is our God? It's not something that you have done or I have done. It's something that fully depends upon his work. He is our maker, not merely in the sense of our creator, but in the sense of our recreation. He made us. And he cares for us. We are the people of his pasture. Everything you and I need, he provides. We live out of his hand. We live out of his care. Like sheep, we are fully dependent upon him. But more than that, we are the sheep of his hand. He personally takes care of us. And how much more personal can it be than to remember that Jesus Christ paid for my sin? My sin. Can you say that? He didn't pay for sins in general, as a category. He paid for David's adultery and murder. He paid for Peter's denial. He paid for Paul's violent persecution of the church. And he paid for Jock Roots and his evil, unbelieving heart. That's how personal our God is in his care for us. Do you see why you and I have reason to rejoice and to bow down before him? But now God not only wants us to bow, he wants us to listen to be responsive to him. And so the psalm comes and the note he takes is very serious. It's a warning here. Today, if you hear his voice. Now the word today, the writer to the Hebrews uh, in chapters 3 and 4 would quote this, this section of the psalm and he, he explains it to us. But the word today means literally right now God is speaking and every time you hear a sermon every time you hear God's word read you hear and should hear his voice because he's addressing us and the psalmist says do not harden your hearts don't let your heart be, be so hard that you do not hear, that you do not listen, 
that you do not pay attention. And now he goes to Exodus 17 and to Numbers 20. The beginning of the 40 years and the end of the 40 years. Two very similar passages where the Israelites come to a place and there is no water and they complain, they quarrel with God, they test God. That's what Meribah and Masa means, testing and quarreling quarreling and testing, and God speaks to Moses in the first episode in Exodus 17 and say, hit the rock and I will give them water, and he hits, and he says in the second one, don't hit the rock and I will give them water, but Moses is so mad and he says to the people, I will give you water, or do you want me and Aaron to give you water? And he hits the rock. He disobeys God. But God gives them water. But because of that, Moses and Aaron will not enter the promised land. And all of the Israelites who did not believe the testimony of the spies when they come back to tell them about the glory of the promised land did not want to take God at his word. God said, you will all die in the wilderness. You won't enter my rest. Which is, for the Israelites here, God's rest would be the promised land. That land where uh, um, God's people would be able to enjoy his provision, would enjoy what God has given to his people in peace. But you see, because they did not listen, God said, you will not enter my rest. These people go astray from me in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. They were unresponsive to the word of God. They didn't take God at his word and trust him and obeyed him. Now, there's a subtle switch that took place in these words. Did you notice? The psalmist speaks, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And then in verse 9, When your fathers put me to the test, and put me to the proof. It goes from God's hearing God's voice to God's voice being present in the moment. And God's voice is always present when his word is open. So the question to you and I always is, do you hear the voice of the Lord? And are you responding and listening to his voice. In this divine interpretation of this passage that we have in Hebrews 3 and 4, we read these words in verse 12 of chapter 3. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But it exhort one another as long as it's called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ if we hold our original confidence firm to the end. Cling to Christ and you will enter that final rest. The perfect triumph of Christ over all evil and all will be made new. A foretaste we already experience in worship as we listen submissively to the word. So come. Come and do not harden your heart as you hear the voice of the Lord speak to us in worship. Let's pray.
Lord, what a privilege and joy it is as your people to come in praise and bow down before you. Give us ears that will hear, that we would not, in arrogance, close our ears to you and not hear your voice as you speak to us from your word. We pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. May the Lord watch over you and prepare your heart for worship. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name I, I encourage you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.